3A, the Russell Tyler Ruthton Knights. And the champions of Region 8A, the Cruxton Pirates. At forward for RTI, six foot four inch senior, number 32, Jeff Bros. At forward for Cruxton, six foot four inch senior, number 21, Bob Holder. At forward for the Knights, six foot six inch senior, number 34, John Mulkern. At forward for the Pirates, six foot four inch senior, number 33, Steel Sensky. At center for RTR, six foot 11 inch junior, number 54, Wendell Beisman. At center for Cruxton, six foot five inch senior, number 41, Lad Notek. At guard for the Knights, six foot senior, number 14, Bob Schuler. At guard for the Pirates, six foot senior, number 11, Corey Sandro. At guard for Russell Tyler Ruthton, six foot two inch junior, number 22, Troy Bauman. At guard for Cruxton, six foot one inch senior, number 35, Dan Ellingson. The head coach of the Knights is Ray Riley. The head coach of the Pirates, Herb Highs. And your officials for this game are Lauren Benz and Frank White. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to please stand and honor America as the Crookston High School Band, under the direction of Lloyd Lee, leads us in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Jim, and I think that if Crookston can get Russell Tyler Rufin into the running game, they may, they'll be much more comfortable. Bertha Hewitt was not able to do it. Obvious RTR. size advantage in the middle for RTR, and we'll see if they employ Wendell Beisman early, but there's nice size there for Crookston for a Class A school, 6'5", 6'5", 6'4". Across the front, they would match up with the, either the double-A finalists tomorrow. Herb Haas says he hasn't faced a team of such height, but they did face a Bemidji team that was almost as tall, and they split with them during the season. Is Russell Tyler Rooston in the white on the attack against the zone, employed early by the Crookston Pirates. On the left side, Schuler jumps it down and back out for Schuler. Inside knocked away, and the Pirates control. Fenske got a hand on that one from behind. Corey Sandro, a 20-point game yesterday in the opening win over Wasika. Get it down low. Beisman with a block on the shot attempt by Holder, and it goes back to the Knights. Number 22 is Troy Bauman. It's the middle down the stretch yesterday, hitting 9 of 10 from the free throw line. There's Beisman's first shot of the game. And the rebound controlled by Bob Holder. He's it for Sandwell. And we're still looking for our first point. Game's more than a minute old. Wendell Beisman averages about nine a game. And he's very much an intimidating person on defense. Sensky trying to get inside. is called for traveling. Frank White, the veteran official, to pass the ball in and leave it for RTR to advance. Bauman. Works in, dumps off nicely. Maybe the first basket of the game is John Mulkern, 6'4", 6'6", senior. An impressive ploy by RTR. They turn it over. Mulkern gets it over to Beisman. Now, Cooks are getting a little taste of their own medicine here. They like to play the full court game, but it's RTR. Well, it's tough because they put 6'11 Bison on the out-of-bounds pass. They break the press. Sandral off to Holder. 
He can't score, and Mo Kern is there for the rebound. RTR starting out, starting out very strong, just like they did yesterday. Schuler gets it off nicely to Froze, but he can't hit, and Cookson gets it back. Take a look at Corey Sandra. He's an excellent point guard and team leader. He had 20 points yesterday for Cookson. Right side, Ellingson is number 35, Dan Ellingson. Here's Sandra, back for Ellingson. Can't get it into Holder back out for Sandral. Goes on the right side to Lad Notek. Skip pass there and a long bomb hit by Dan Ellingson. Had six points yesterday and has half that total now today. Cooks didn't shooting very well from the three-point range yesterday. They were seven for 11 as a team. Bob Schuler gets it into Beisman. It's back in the corner. And the shot taken and missed by Bros. Tie up on the rebound, and Beisman is going to get the foul. Well, Beisman's going to get his share of rebounds, obviously, because of his height. But Crookston doing a nice job of having the inside position for Bison and the call for over and back, over the back. Rose's team's leading scorer will normally make that shot. Crookston gets it in against the pressure, but Senski's in trouble now. Clears it off. Ellingson gets it into the front court to Sandra. He shoots, it's way off. And they've gotten a hand on it there. And it's collected by Bowles, who leaves it again for Troy Bauman. Bob Schuler, number 14. Corner for Bowles. Schuler. Tipped in by Mulkern. Mulkern's kind of a quiet player, but really is effective inside. Here comes Senski. He is very good in the open court. Put up and in by Holder. Senski took advantage of the Three on two situation. And Holder made a nice move. Joe Bauman checks instructions with Ray Riley on the RTR bench. Alter gets it into Beisman. Back in the corner for Groves, and he drains it at the two pointer. Well, Cookson's matching up in a man to man, and it's going to be difficult to cover both the inside and the out. You've got to respect Jeff Rose's shooting ability, and you got to also respect Beisman on the inside. Nice move by Bob Holder. Holder did a nice job decoying for his defensive man and took the ball in full stride and put the layup in. Seven to six, Crookston. Rather, eight to seven, I'm sorry. For the RTR. The Knights of Russell Tyler Rooster. Bob Schuler. Out on top goes to Troy Bauman. Remember, Bison comes up high but doesn't get the ball. Kind of a lazy pass in there by Bauman. Tried to get cute, and back comes Cookston. Dished off in the middle for Senski. He's bumped, gets it up and off, and Rose gets the rebound. Rose can't go against Cookston's stingy man-to-man here. And Mulker on a nice feed from Schuler converts. And RTR leads by three. Good job by Corey Sando recognizing that he could run the baseline after the score. Triple team, and they have the break. Notek cuts it in there. Lad Notek. 6'5 senior. Took it in full stride. A good feed by Sandro. He really attacks the basket on the drive. Beisman fouled. They're going to go on no tech or holder. That's got to feel good to get a dunk in the state tournament. Foul is on no tech. First foul of the game. There's Sandra looking off one direction, and no tech jams it in there. On the other end, Ellingson did a good job avoiding the trap there. Got out of a three man gang. And Kicked it ahead to Sandra. Beisman drops the first one cleanly. Wendell Beisman wants to be an engineer at NASA or Boeing. So he 
He's just a junior. One more year before he'll be looking for his college. Savage. Every Savage Sensky doing a nice job on the block out there. There's plenty of colleges looking for him, too, at 6'11". Sensky misses badly, and the ball will go back to RTR when we come back from a break. It's a two-point lead right now for the Knights at the 1988 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. What can I do for you? I'd like to apply for a loan. Name? Ellingson will move it around the zone. No tech. Back for Sandra. This is Ellingson. Malkern really keeping a good eye on Steele Sensky on the inside, very aware of where he is. Bauman got a piece of the shot by No Tech, and the No Tech got it back, threw it away. Jeff Bowes kicks it back to Troy Bauman. Schuler. Lobs it for Bros. He thought he was going to be going up for it, and he did not. So the ball goes back to Crookston. And we have a timeout. Russell Tyler Ruthson has a four point lead over the Crookston Pirates at the 1988 Minnesota State. We're here in the latter stages of the first quarter of our first semifinal game in Class A. Zone defense for Russell Tyler Rufton, Corey Sandral, Vlad Notek works the perimeter, Steele Sensky gets it in the lane as it hacked away, and the little man Schuler is going to pick up the foul. Little, I say, six foot, he looks little in this game. Well, there's Sensky, seeing the five minutes there. Schuler got him on the other side with, with the arm. Pass in underneath for Crookston, Notek gets it to Ellingson for Sandral. Ellingson to Sensky. RTR really likes that 2 3 zone. They move real well. Bauman and Schuler, the guards, put a lot of pressure on the outside players. And they knock it away and regain it. The tall back line makes it very tough in that zone. It sure does. It's, it's really an intimidating factor, and it was for Bertha Hewitt in yesterday's game. Bertha Hewitt has a player named Corey Sandberg whose shots were really altered. Um, every time he he got the ball inside. He was very conscious of, of Wendell Bison and the rest of the, the company, and it makes a difference. Bauman from way out, just a bit short. Crookston comes out of there, and he did not get the shot off in time. Our first quarter is complete here at the Civic Center. It is Russell Tyler Ruthton with a four-point lead. This is the 1988 Minnesota State High School boys basketball. And 5:30 on Channel 9. Happy days comes your way at six. Right here on receptive channel nine. We're ready to start the second quarter now. Crookston will have the ball. Lad no tech will pass it in front of our location. Number 41 gets it to number 11, Corey Sandral. Dan Ellingson over on the wing for Steel Sensky. See Bob Holder with the skip pass to Ellingson. As they try to find a way to get a good shot off against this tough Russell Tyler Ruthman zone. It is tough. They really like to double team the ball and trap in the corner. You see Bowling coming down in the corner. Beisman back into the game. And Bros getting a little bit of a rest now. Or not Bros, Anderson's back out. Holder in traffic. And a nice shot. He says, well, I can't go over Wendell Beisman, so I'll go under him. <laughs> nice move by Bob Holder on the baseline. He has six points right now. Tied with Mulkern of Russell Tyler Rufton for game high honors to this point. Bauman. Ten seconds. Did not, did not advance it to the... Uh, Timeline so that trap defense is able to produce the violation. Here comes Holder inside on the previous play. He had a similar basket yesterday at the end of the game. Key, key basket against Wasika. Well, batted out of there by Beisman. The big fella reaches down and kicks it loose. Rose gets it into Mulkern. His shot is up softly on the rim, but doesn't go. 
Corey Sandro on the run. That's one way to try to beat that zone is get down the floor. Sandro misses, but it's put up and in by Notek. Well, Kirsten likes to get transition baskets. Even if it's not a full-fledged fast break, they like to get shots when the defense isn't quite ready for them. There's Bauman. He has two down. Well, Kern takes it in. They had a break, but he could not finish it off. And now Crookston with a chance to take the lead. Senski down low, beats Beisman to the backboard and scores. Crookston head the lead for the first time, 15 to 13. Bauman. The no look pass to Malkern, but he has it batted loose. And here comes Sandro on the attack. Sensky stops and hits it. Well, Sandro to Sensky. It's a deadly combination. Looks like they're getting it going here. Ray Riley recognizes a little bit of panic on the part of his players and gets the timeout. It is now Crookston with an eight point run. They have all eight points here in the second quarter and lead by four at the 1988 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. Semifinal final state tournament time. Ray Riley of Russell Tyler Roots and on the left, Herb Haas of, I was going to say Ada. He was of Ada, but now he's of Crookston on the right. That's right, Herb Haas wearing that yellow and, or gold and white rather, striped sweater. He wore that last night. Maybe it's good luck. Yeah. Russell Tyler Roots into the attack. Troy Bauman looks inside against the man to man. Beisman up high. Taken away by Sensky. Tries to get it to no tech, but the pass was at his feet and he couldn't gather it in. And the Knights come back. Trying to stop an eight-point run here by Crookston. Rose into Beisman. He tried to kick it back out. It's taken away by Holder. Quickly ahead to Sensky. It goes, and he is fouled by Brose. Well, Steele Sensky has in himself turned the, the pace of this game right over to Crookston. Coming up with a steal and heading down court, he really takes the basket, to, the ball to the basket strong. Had no tech with a good kick ahead here. Holder, I guess that's Holder with the pass. Sensky gets the contact and now goes to the line. Make it 11 straight for Crookston. Well, he had a 17-point first half yesterday. He's an explosive scorer, and he seems very determined. He's here in the early going, and Crookston has to work against the RTR zone. They have a little bit of a problem, but when they can get out on that running game, which they surely like to do, they're able to convert. That's exactly right, Jim. That's why RTR wants to keep this, this game at, at their pace. They want to see a half-court game. Right now, Bros goes down low to Anderson. But Kerry Anderson with a bit of a relief off the bench as he replaces Beisman in there and hits one from the baseline. And that stops the string of 11 straight for Crookston. Dan Ellingson back for Sandro. Back out for Sensky. No tech. Ellingson back to Sandral. <laughs> Ellingson made the only three-pointer he took. He's got it available, but he's turned it down a couple of times. Pass inside for Notek from Holder. It's a little too hard to handle. And it'll go out to RTR. Chuck Picard enters the game, replacing Notek. Uh, along the front line for Crookston. He's a 6'5 senior, whereas number 43. Gary Anderson collects the pass. They had Mulkern under the basket, but they missed them. Troy um, Bauman, the assistant coach's son. Nice good shot by 
throws, but it doesn't go. Crookston back quickly now. They do not beat the Russell Tyler Ruthven zone down the floor. Sensky with a long jumper comes out hard. Mulkern gets it. Two forty-five to go in a well-played first half. Bauman trying to work some kind of clear out here for Bros. Anderson in the corner back to Schuler. Well, Cookson in a man-to-man, -man, but they're all sagging. You can see they're sagging in the paint, helping out. Ellingson doing a nice job of sagging in the paint to help out. Tom gives it to Bros finally. And the foul is on Sensky. No check checks back in quickly, so Chuck Picard was not in the game very long. Well, there's Bros recognizing that Sandra was there to help out. Turns toward the baseline away from the defense. Draws the foul. Lauren Benz is the other official tonight. He'll hand the ball to Jeff Bros, Lauren from Minnesota City. And Jeff Bros has scored over a thousand points. He's been a three-year starter for RTR. All conference, all area. Come in with a 22 and one record to the tournament. Now 23 and one. And we're going to get a timeout now as RTR closes the gap to three late in the first half of the 1988 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. Attention, RTR fans. They lead by three here. Trying to get to the finals along with RTR. Only one team can get there naturally to meet the winner of the De La Salle Big Fork game which follows here at the Civic Center. Sondral in trouble. Now they get it ahead finally into the front court. Ellingson. No tech. It's a loose and Crookston gets the ball back. Bob Holder's not afraid to take it in the middle. He puts it up and in again. It's his third inside basket. Well, certainly anything, any contributions from other players really take the pressure off of people like Steele Sensky, who certainly is being keyed on this evening. Holder's playing a great game. Rose, nice move. Sensky gets called for the foul. He doesn't like it, but... Rose is going to go back to the line. Sensky drawing that assignment of the other top offensive player. So that shows you what Coach Herb Haas thinks of his star player. He also puts him on the other team's toughest offensive Bob man. Sensky, second second foul on Sensky. Another look at that flurry there. Been a pretty cleanly played first half minute 10 to go. Neither team in the bonus yet. Of course, that was a two-shot foul. So Bros. Goes to the line and makes the first. The substitution for Crookston. 23, Clarence Ashenbrenner. Yeah, good move by Herb Haas to take Sensky out of the game at this point in time. No chance in risking him picking up the third foul with a minute 10 to go in this second quarter. He probably needs a rest anyway. And Beisman out on the point of this press. That's a little bit unusual to see 6-11. Holder charges oh. in and puts it up nicely. He knows how to take it to the basket. Crookston leads by five. 50 seconds left in the half. Off the foot of Sandra will go back to RTR. Well, it, it is unusual to see a 6L11 on, on the point like that, but Beisman does move well, and again, I think Ray Riley's position is that Beisman is, is that much bigger and that much more difficult to throw over. It certainly, that's a big trap. From the corner, Mulker can't find anything and kicks it out to Bauman. Mulker in the corner, it's a two-point basket. 
20 seconds left now. Crimson will no doubt. Work for one shot. 12 seconds. Ashenbrenner in trouble. Four seconds left as Crookston will pass it in. Play number one, let's see what it is. anybody's game certainly Crookston taking more shots from the field and Bob Holder has really told the story he has 10 first half points take a look at everything everything looks pretty even though both of these teams shot real well in winning their quarterfinal games well over 50 percent Crookston is over 50 percent again in the first half and 44 percent not too bad for RTR rebounds about even and turnovers are fairly low considering that both teams are employing Crookston. some form of press Excuse me, Crookston had a big second quarter outscoring RTR 15 to 8. Okay, we'll be back with second half action momentarily from the Class A semifinals at the 1988 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball. Go to Jerry Dahlberg of KROX Radio and Crookston has been covering the boys tournament for 35 years and this is the first time he's been able to call a Crookston game play by play. I'm sure he's very happy to bring it up back north. Well, he probably wasn't broadcasting last time they were in the tournament back in 1923. <laughs> and he's happy to see his club in front at the half. Crookston rebounds the miss by RTR and take it on the attack here as we start the final 16 minutes. Corey Sandral to Dan Ellingson. RTR staying in that very tough zone defense. Sansky trapped. Knocked away by Bauman. Bob Schuler, we talked about him while we were away at the half. He hit three three pointers in the opening game and the victory yesterday over Bertha Hewitt, but he's only taken one shot and has missed that in this contest. Schuler looks to the right side this time to Mulkern. Back for Bros. Down low to Mulkern. Nice reverse, but he doesn't get the bounce and Senke rips it off. To the foul on Bauman of this half. Well, it has been kind of a low-scoring game, but I, I, I think that both teams have shot a decent percentage in that they both shot over 50%. But the pace has just been so deliberate. Both teams really working it around, you know, making 10 to 15 passes a lot of times before they'll even take a shot. Not this time. Ellingson misses. He hit one of those in the first half. Bros got an elbow in the shoulder and he's trying to shake that off as RTR comes up the court. The Knights trail by three. Bauman gets it into Beisman. Tied up by Sandral. Possession belongs to Crookston. Well, Corey Sandral at six foot, even sneaking in there against 6'11 Beisman, as you can see, brought that ball right down to his waist. And that makes it easy for a man like Sandral with quick hands. He's done a nice job of collapsing on Beisman inside. Crookston just seems to know when they should take it in and when they should pull it out. Well, they played a lot together. They play in the UMC, the University of Minnesota Crookston Basketball League in the summer. A couple of them on a team, and they really play a lot and have really started to know where he other is going to be and of course they're all seniors. Rose puts the free throw line jumper off. Beisman gets the rebound, tips it once. Rose again. And shooting percentages have cooled off here in the third quarter. Rose takes it up and in past Sensky. That is a one point game. Nice drive by Rose. 
see RTR trying to seal off that middle because that's where the press works from. And Sandra hits Holder perfectly in stride. He takes it to the goal. He had 10 in the first half. Holder now has 12 in the game. Leading scorer in the contest. And it's a three-point lead again for Crookston. Again, it's interesting that RTR continues to press because that has allowed Crookston to play their kind of game. They sat back in the zone. They would force him to play more of a half-court style. We have a travel call out of that pileup. Bauman still hobbled a little bit when he went down in the first half or moments ago. You see Bauman trying to take it up against Sensky. No call there. Ball is loose. There's Bauman with it long enough to get a traveling call. Crookston's Dan Ellingson against that RTR zone over to Lad Notech. Fensky, Ellingson, Cassandra. Holder again oh, has it right back at him by Bros. Nice rejection. That's the first time Holder has been unable to get his shot off inside. That's how we're seeing the game right now. Beisman misses it, but Mulkern is there on the rebound, and it's back to a one-point game. We're under the two-minute mark here in the third quarter. Sandro looked like he wanted to go up there from about 25 feet. Kicked it back to Ellingson. Sandro looks like he wants to shoot it. Ellingson lets fly, and it's off the run, front rim, just barely grazed it into the hands of Bauman. All turn, looked twice, didn't shoot, and the third time. Good hot goal by go. Bro's. Bro's got the rebound away from Sensky. is fouled as he goes to the bucket by Notek. Well, Notek's done a good job on Beisman inside. Beisman making a quick little dribble to the baseline, and Notek got him on the arm. Nice pass inside by Bauman, but Beisman put the ball on the floor. And that kind of took away any advantage his 6'11 size would give him. High game. 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Wendell Beisman shows a nice touch from the foul line. He really does. He has a nice touch inside, too. He is the second tallest player in the state tournament. Second to seven-footer Bob Martin out of Apple Valley. So it's Russell Tyler Ruthen in front by a point in the latter stages of the third quarter at the boys' state high school basketball tournament. Here in Class A competition, Crookston takes it to the attack, trailing by one. Late in the third quarter, the lap for Notek clears himself and then gets Beisman to foul him. Well, Notek got the ball in a very difficult position. Did a nice job of coming back out to the basket. Well, he faked the 6'6 man in the air and looked up and saw the big guy. <laughs> he said, oh no, 6'11. Ladd has a 3.97 grade average. Quite the student. You know what that means? What? That means he got a B somewhere. <laughs> One B, probably. He's going to be on the trail of that. Yeah. Probably in handwriting in eighth grade or something. Crookston back in front by one as Notek makes both free throws. Rose working against Sensky. That's been a great matchup throughout the game. Well, those two are both intense competitors. Even battling for position. 
Senske fronting now. Down near 10 seconds. Did it go off Rose? Nope, it's gonna stay with RTR. Rose looks for his long jumper in the corner. It comes out at three seconds. Ellingson lets fly. And it's over everything. But Crookston had a three-point lead at half, clinging to a one-point margin now after three quarters. It's Crookston 30, RTR 29 at the 1988 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. really cheating off of Bowman. Bowman has not really been an offensive threat from the outside. Sondral cheating down every opportunity. Sagging in the lane. Beisman inside. Rose puts it back and RTR is in front. Well, Bob Holder had it for a second, but Jeff Rose took it away. Converted. Still patient against that zone. Ellingson to Sandral. And Sensky. It's been really starting their offense from long range. Beisman rips that rebound away from Notek off Sensky's miss. And RTR in control now with a one point lead. Rose with a nice dish. Beisman uses the left hand. That was all created by Jeff Rose. He made a nice little head fake, drew the defense over, and spotted Wendell Beisman because no tech had gone to cover Rose. Down draw for Holder. He has it knocked loose. And this time it will be Crookston's ball. So they get it back. But they trail by 3 6 12 to play. Herb Haas will have a chance to design some strategy at the Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. And dish it off to Wendell Beisman. There's a left hand pass and a left hand shot. And lefties like Robinson and Gilliland like to see that. A little confusion there for Crookston. Corey Sandra with the ball. 0 for three today. He really hasn't done much outside shooting. He's very capable of it, though. This is a heck of a shot. Crookston back in it. Sensky comes to life here. They're going to need him down the stretch. Oh, Rose wasn't looking and happened to fortunately go right to Bauman. Now Rose turns against Sensky. Boy, those two guys are real competitors. Same size, same hustle. They both are capable of scoring inside and out. And we're watching them take control now in the fourth quarter. Rose answers Sensky's basket and puts RTR back up by three. Sandra, let's go. Crash for the rebound, and it's knocked loose. RTR gets it back. Sandro Powell is shooting that one from further out than he had to. He's got to have an itchy trigger finger. He's a high scorer, and they really haven't allowed him to get his shot off against his own. That's the answer play good defense. Bauman with a smooth move inside, and no tech clips Beisman. So the 6'11 junior go to the line. Beisman makes the first free throw and it's a four point game. Second one doesn't go. 
Holder grabs the rebound off. Sandro rushes it up. Goes around the screen. Back out to Ellington. Sandro looks for Sensky. No tech to Sensky. Well, the hook shot is no good. Mull turns, snaps it off. Since he's shooting a hook, he's thinking about Wendell Bison there. It's probably not something he practices very often. Bauman takes it to the goal, but can't get it to go. No tech, clears it ahead to Sensky. They don't have the advantage, but he oh. makes a sweet pass to Holder, who somehow Holder had nowhere to come keeps down. from traveling. Fell over a guy and kicked it back out, and now Crookston takes time out halfway through the final quarter here. Four minutes to go. Ray Riley is wondering what he should instruct here. 56 by the Wayne Courtney coached. Minneapolis Roosevelt team. They ran up 101 points in the final, I think, that year. Yeah, they beat Blue Earth 101 to 54. That was a powerhouse. Sensky. Nice pass, and Holder scores. Holder has really played well today. Again, Sensky doing a nice job of spotting the open player. They really collapsed around Sensky, and that time he found a teammate now, Russell Tyler Ruthen, trying to protect that two-point lead. 3.23 to go. And Bison is taking a rest for a moment. Gary Anderson in the game. Alman kicks it out. These two teams take care of the ball very well. We may see long periods here where they hold on to it. Rose gets a good look, though, and pops it in there. He is really tough. He had Sinski rocking in there. He didn't know whether he was going to go to the basket or pull up, and a good shooter stopped and popped to put a RTR up by four. It goes back inside, and Holder acrobatically lays it in. Back to a two-point game with 2.45 to go. You're right, Jim. These two teams have really taken good care of the ball, and it's fun to watch because there have not been many turnovers. Possessions are valuable in low-scoring games like these. Troy Bauman now sneaks through on the baseline. Foot on the line. And he stepped out of bounds, says Lauren Benz. Let's see if we can catch it here on the baseline. Troy Bauman, a little hesitation move with the left hand. Nice move to get around Sandra, but there's not a lot of room there. Yep. The right sneaker. That darn right sneaker. Two will tie, three will put Cookston ahead. Ellingson lets it go. He got it. Dan Ellingson, the six foot senior, averaging nine a game. Two minutes to go now. RTR. Solved the press, but elected not to go after the two-on-one. They pull it out. Rose wants that ball. Anderson back for Bauman into Bros. He wheels. Sensky gets the rebound. And they'll pull it out. How long will RTR stay in their zone now? They're coming, man. <laughs> Mulkern looked to the bench. He said, hey, it's about time. And Ray Riley nodded. Here they come out to get him. Ellingson and Bauman with a little hand check picks up the call. 117 to play. We're not anywhere near the one and one yet. Odds on device number 22, Troy Bauman, third personal 14 foul. Little one doesn't know any better. He'll say he was there at one time. 117 to play now. It's Crookston by one. They have the ball at the Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. Nailing the three-pointer to put his team up by one. Ellingson has two three-point baskets in the game, two of three from that distance. Crookston will pass it in. They are near the one and one. One more would put them in the shooting situation. They have a couple of fouls to give, though. They've only committed two against RTI. Sensky, as they work the play inside to Sandral. Three seconds. And he's in the lane too long. That play was designed at, during the timeout, and it worked, except Sandral got caught a little far underneath. And 
Thunder will use his dribble and couldn't go anywhere and couldn't get out. Rose passing in. He has 16 points in the game. He and Bob Holder of Cooks now the leading scorers in the contest. Wendell Beisman for Bros as we're near the one minute mark. Cookson leads by one. RTR has the ball. So they'll be looking to free up Jeff Bros if, if at all possible. Again, it's very hard for these players to see the clock. Mulkern takes it, way short. Sandral has it. 30 seconds to go. Bauman gets his fourth foul, and it's a one-on-one -one situation. Corey Sandral, knowing that they're going to just come after him. Good defense by Bauman. He had the crowd him, though, and he got called for the bump. 25 seconds to go. Ray Riley. Let's take a look here at Ray Riley on the bench. That shot by Mulkern did not bring smiles to their faces. We have 25 seconds to go, and RTR takes a timeout. Crookston leads it by one. And they will be shooting the free throws. The bonus situation for Corey Sandral. Primetime news will be coming up following this game. And Perry will give us all the sports news. We'll check the Twins results from Florida. Let's see if we can hear what Crookston is plotting. We need one person high. Who did I say line against the high post? Okay. Okay. Go. 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 Now we just got in on the tail end of Herb Haas' lecture there. Past the defensive scheme, he was talking about their offensive strategy. But it would sure help things as far as he's concerned if Sandro could drop two free throws through. Sandro is the senior captain and the senior class president stepping up for some very big free throws. Very polite, he said thank you to the official. <laughs> for the ball. Cooks in by two. 25 seconds to go. Doesn't go. Two will tie and three will give the Knights of Russell Tyler Ruth in the lead. RTR needs to get seconds. a better shot than they got before. They got the ball in the right person's hands. He makes the two-pointer, Groves does. Nine seconds to go. Senski looks at the clock. He's gonna have to shoot that ball. Oh, Off the front the rim, and we have overtime. Wasensky took a look at the clock with about seven seconds to go. He was at mid court. He could have taken another couple dribbles in there, but it looks like he got caught in between. Thought he was going to make a pass, and his teammate wasn't looking for it. We'll take a look here at the Russell Tyler Ruthen bench. There's they can see as Jeff Rose puts it through the net. They're very excited. Of course, there were still 10 seconds left. But Sensky missed. Let's listen in to the RTR huddle. Wendell Beisman will jump against Lee Notek. Beisman 6'11, Notek 6'5. 
Rotek got the quick jump and the tip. Well, they're going to call Sandro for traveling. Get that ball on the ground, he can't roll with it. And throws. Leaves it for Bauman. Jeff Rose with 18 points. Rose running the baseline, really trying to lose Sensky on a pick. Wendell Bison running some interference for him. No tech's going to be called for the foul to send Beisman to the line. Beisman in a low post there. Puts the ball on the floor. Got a foul on the field goal attempt. Just a third team foul on Crookston, but it's a two shot foul, so Beisman's at the line. He has eight points, as you see. It's the fourth foul for No tech. RTR by one as Beisman makes one of two. But we're on the odd number again with 2.30 to go in overtime. Well, they're packing the zone in. Sondra ought to take a few more steps in closer to get a closer look at the basket. No tech misses and it was Bros collecting the rebound. Rose gets it back out to Bauman. I'll turn with a nice move. Nice move by Mulker down the baseline. Really moves well for his size. Sandra has it deflect off the foot of Schuler. Sandra picks it loose, and Ellingson does a good job getting his feet in the front court before he picks the ball up. Very poised for a pressure situation. Yeah, Holder. Smart play. There's Sensky. Nice pass from Holder. And we're back to a one-point game. Russell Tyler Roof been in front with the ball. Oh. Almost tipped by Holder. Not quite stolen. Sandro comes out to challenge Bauman. They have the ball and they have the lead. Sandro tries to swipe it loose in his call for the foul, but it's just the fourth team foul. Crookston takes the timeout. 50 seconds to go in the overtime. RTR with a one-point lead. It's our third overtime game of the tournament. Second in Class A. The other one, of course, last night with Big Fork. Here's Herb Haas and Crookston. Sounds like he's running a play. He said, let's make sure you set it now. Don't go too soon. Bauman. Sensky comes out to challenge Bros. Sandal 
fouled Schuler. I don't think there was any doubt about it. He's, he's complaining, but he uh, whapped him pretty good there as he went for the swipe on the steal. 32 seconds to go. Sandral's third foul, and Schuler kind of jammed his face into the deck there when he went down. He might have cut his lip, but Sandral did a nice job in the huddle, at least aware of how many fouls he has. Asking how many do I have, and he had one to give up. Schuler's a good foul shooter, and they wouldn't have had him out there handling the ball as much as he was. First one goes through cleanly. Comes out, bites oh, him, bites takes him. it away from Bob Holder. Now they really have to go in their offense. Down four, under 30 seconds to go. Sandral gets it to Sensky for three. Oh, for three. And pulls it within, within one. Her pods want the timeout. They're going to have to really put the pressure on to get the ball back. Wendell Bison on the other end. What a big offensive rebound. It's Steel Sensky. Very aware of where he was. Bros came right out on him and he put it through cleanly. 15 seconds to go. And Cookston had the enough to call a timeout immediately before RTR could get the ball in bounds. My goodness. Here's the Cookston huddle. Well, they may have to foul, but Herb Haas is not one an intentional foul. You hear him say, no pushing, no shoving. But the inbounds, certainly if they can get the ball off of a steal in their own front court. He said, even if we have to foul 32, we will, and then we'll try to freeze it. Schuler. Sandral picks up his fourth. They let two seconds tick away. We're at 13. Well, the three-point game is done because with that three-pointer by Sensky, even if Schuler should drop two by RTR, or rather, Crookston has a chance to come back and send it into double overtime. Ray Riley, tad nervous there, as anyone might be. And Crookston takes another timeout. They want Schuler to uh, ponder his situation for a moment. I think Schuler knew that was going to happen. Now we're over with Ray Riley and the RTR Knights. You know they're going to come for the three-point now. They got it one. I think I don't know what they're going to do. We've got two on them. Right? we got two. You guys, you guys get back. Jeff, when you get in the middle one, John, you guys get out. Watch the line a little bit. You guys up that course, man. You two guys. You guys, after one mix, you guys pick up. You, you guys, you guys are standing there. Just got the tail end of Herb Haas and bring that ball right up the court. Of course, uh, Ray Riley saying they're going to go for the three, going on the assumption that Schuler's going to drop these two free throws. Well, what an exciting finish for the right to play in the state championship game. It's a one and one. And Bob Schuler who cools his fingers. He hit one of two. Very good on the first one. Two point lead. We got them both. 13 seconds. They need three to tie. Sandra lets fly. It was right on line, hard off the back rim. RTR is going to go to the championship. 
Grove dribbles it out. Well, what a finish. Bob Schuler's free throws. I sit. Sandro not able to convert on the other end. Only one team can advance. Crookston goes down like champions in overtime. Also Tyler Ruthman, 48. At Crookston, 45. Another semifinal game to come. It'd be hard pressed to be any better than this. As Jeff Bros, Kerry Anderson get hugs from well wishers. Here's the RTR bench. They're going to play for the state title. De La Salle and Big Fork coming up. This is the 1988 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament.